Hello and welcome. So today we're going to be going over that 25 mark question that you did last week. And this is what is here. So it's to evaluate the effectiveness on a tax on sugary drinks. So this is our first kind of adventure into 25 mark questions. You have one 25 mark question in your paper one, one 25 mark question in your paper two, and two 25 mark questions in your paper three. So each one of those follows the same structure, and that is this structure here. So luckily you need to learn one structure for all four 25 mark questions that you will be asked. So you need to do analysis, evaluation, analysis, evaluation, and then finish with a conclusion. Now, I would say there's so much kind of um, information around whether or not you should include a conclusion. Now, this is where I stand on a conclusion. It is not 100% necessary for paper one and paper two, right? You will not necessarily gain any additional marks for including a conclusion. If you are gonna include a conclusion, it's probably best to kind of put these two together. However, it might be useful for you to sum up your points and to talk about the kind of micro, or potentially if you're doing it in paper two, your macro impacts. My advice is to include it, but if you're running out of time, you are much, much better off to focus on these four paragraphs here. And I mean, this is the kind of the one bit that I suppose, like if you're really pushed for time, that's the thing that can go and just focus on this here. So what I'm going to do today is go through some potential analysis and evaluation points and how you should build those analysis and evaluation points. Now these are going to be bullet, po bullet pointed kind of plans um, of what I'm expecting from you and obviously you're going to be putting these into full sentences and in our next video we're going to be going through actual example paragraphs and the levels that you are expected to get. So let's crack on. So the first point that I'm going to make here is kind of structured around the idea of every time you get a government intervention question, you should always ask yourself, why is the government intervening? What impact is that government intervention gonna have? And that is gonna help you build your plan. So our question here, evaluate the effectiveness of a tax on sugary drinks. Why is the government intervening into that market? What is the impact of that government intervention? Well, we know that the government is intervening because it's a demerit good, and that's gonna help us kind of start off. So my first point here, is going to be that the tax is put on, as soon as you see a kind of tax question, you know you have to include a tax diagram, right? And there's so many times that I read these answers to tax-based extension, um, extended questions, and they don't have a tax diagram in them. That is the first thing you should be drawing is your tax diagram, because you know that the examiner is going to expect it. So that's our first point here, get it over and done with. So tax put on the producer, by the government, right? So we know that the tax is put in by the producer, so this is going to shift the supply curve to the left, it's going to shift the supply curve inwards, and we can see that here, and this should reduce the quantity demanded um, here by that price increase, and that is all because of the consumer burden, right? The amount that the consumer is paying, that is the price difference, the price increases, and that causes a movement along the demand curve to the left, which means that the quantity demanded has fallen, and then also, we're going to say that producers are going to leave the market as well. We know that producers are going to leave the market because the producers are paying some of the tax, so therefore it's costing them more to enter the market. If it's costing them more to enter the market, then they're obviously going to be a reduction in the amount of supply that is brought to the market. So not only are we going to have a fall in consumers, we're also going to have a fall in producers in the market as well. So therefore, we are going to see an overall decrease in quantity demanded. Now, we know that um, sugary drinks have, are a demerit good. Therefore, the tax is being put in place to reduce consumption of a demerit good. So therefore, we can say here, Overall, tax has led to a decrease in consumption on sugary drinks, which is what they want to happen because it is a demerit good, right? Now we have to think about a counterbalance to this. Now our evaluation is not an afterthought, it's not a couple of sentences, you are expected to give deep, balanced evaluation. So I just want you to pause for a moment and think about what point is gonna evaluate this, what is gonna be balanced, essentially what is the reality. So in theory we want this to happen, but actually in reality why might this not happen and why might it not happen in the demand for sugary drinks? Why might it not happen in the industry for sugary drinks? So just have a pause and think about what could be the balance to this point. So I think the most kind of obvious balance to this point, it's not the only one, but it is definitely the most obvious is, this is only gonna happen, this kind of outcome of Con consumption falling of a demerit good is only going to happen as long as that demand curve is elastic. 
and actually, if the demand curve is inelastic, it might not have the same impact on the market. So the tax may not lead to a fall in consumption. And I've just kind of broken that down here. So just what, however, this depends on the elasticity of demand. So sugary drinks have an inelastic demand, so therefore we know that an increase in the price level is going to lead to a less than proportionate change in quantity demanded. So what does that mean? Well, it means that despite consumers having a larger burden of the consumption level, because we know that if a good has an inelastic demand, then the consumer is going to bear more of the burden than the producer. But despite the consumer bearing more of the burden than the producer, there is still not going to be a proportionate change in the quantity demanded. So therefore, if you have a tax on sugary drinks and sugary drinks have an inelastic demand, it's not going to have the effect that you want it to have. And actually, in fact, it may not decrease quantity demanded by very much at all. And therefore, we are still consuming a near enough the same amount or nowhere near as much as we would if it had elastic demand of this demerit good. Therefore, we could argue that the tax is not going to be effective in this market. And um, therefore, we have to also please make sure that you understand that you have to have the same level of economic analysis, same level of economic theory and depth of theory in your evaluation as your analysis. I should not be reading your answers thinking, that a student sh could have written this without being in an economics lesson, right? So you should have diagrams. All of your diagrams need to be dynamic diagrams. You know what dynamic means by now, it just means they're adapted. Um, and therefore you should have more than enough economic theory to balance out your analysis point. So your evaluation to be have follow a very similar structure with the same amount of economic depth as your analysis point. It's not an afterthought. You do need to make sure that there's enough depth there. So, like I said, overall, you are explaining why that may not have happened. So it's kind of like that's where the word balanced comes in, right? You're saying this evaluation point would not be the same evaluation point if you'd used a different analysis point. It has to be balanced. It has to be connected. It has to say, basically, like I said, theory, however, in reality. So let's move on to our second analysis point. So think about what you could do as your second analysis point. You might want to pause the video, have a go, kind of preempt what I'm going to say next and see where you end up. So this leads on to our second kind of point of what is the desired impact and why is the government intervening? Well, the government is intervening because it's a demerit good. But the real reason why it's intervening is because that demerit good produces a negative externality and they want to limit the damage to other people who are outside of the transaction. The high consumption of sugary drinks has an impact of those outside of the market whether that's through the NHS, whether that's through kind of like lower productivity, whatever way that it has an impact, it has an impact on the rest of society. So essentially the rest of society is bearing the burden of your consumption, right? Whether you choose to consume or not, I am bearing the kind of responsibility of somebody else's consumption of sugary drinks. So the idea is that the tax kind of forces you to bear more of that responsibility for that consumption, the negative impacts, and therefore you, it increases your marginal private cost because it's now costing you more for each unit that you're using, and that therefore will increase your marginal private cost and you will have a new private equilibrium, which is here, and you will have less of the externality. Now, you could have put here that it's a perfect shift. Um, I absolutely, you could have accepted that, that actually your marginal private cost is going to shift all the way over here and you're going to have um, no externality. I just decided to say relatively realistic and know that actually it's not going to completely eradicate the externality, but there is going to be a reduce, um, like kind of, a reduction in the overall externality, which you can kind of see here. Now, I've chosen two different colours. Obviously, you can't use that in the exam. Please don't use that in the exam. You can do A, B, C, D, E, whatever you need to do to say the externality has fallen, hash, shade, whatever, but just don't use two different colours. So essentially, all I'm saying is here that the tax in the market will reduce the negative externality. It's good to have kind of an overarching point. Um, introduction of the tax increases the marginal private consumption level to here. This means that consumption will fall and the externality will be reduced. You can see that here with the marginal private um, equilibrium quantity has fallen and therefore the marginal private um, equilibrium of cost has risen because you're bearing more of the cost um, of your consumption. 
and society is better off with the tax and consumers burden more of the social cost of the tax, right? So um, this is obviously really boiled down. I expect you to break it down a lot more if you're physically writing it and I'll go through a little bit more of that next lesson. So again, I think you should just pause the video and have a look and think about what would balance this answer out, right? So what would be a reasonable balanced um, evaluation to this analysis point? So the biggest thing that comes to mind for me is the lack of perfect information, right? So the government is putting this tax in place, but actually the government doesn't have that much knowledge about what kind of the elasticity of demand is. They might know some, um, but they're not gonna have perfect information. And therefore you don't really know what the size of the tax is going to be. So it depends, and the size of the tax has a big impact as to the overall effectiveness and result of the tax. And we've seen that historically. Um, if the government, doesn't have well they don't have perfect information but if they set the uh, kind of size of the tax wrong right if they set it too small it's just quite simply not going to really have any effect on the market or the externality consumers will carry on consuming as much as they are they're not really burdening um, very much of the social cost and it's kind of been a lot of intervention for not much outcome so you could say that this main consumption is not impacted enough, right? So we don't really have very much of a fall and I've kind of shown that here with my smaller kind of shift in my diagram. I will say I have seen before where students have used the same diagram as before but said and shown kind of this shift back to the normal marginal private cost. So kind of to illustrate that actually the idea is that you reduce the externality, but actually because of the lack of perfect information and the poor government size of the tax, that actually that's gonna shift that back. So you could draw it this way, you could draw it that way, it's absolutely fine. Either way, you're gonna get a load of marks. Um, and so therefore you need to show that the um, size of the externality is not really gonna change that much and therefore the tax is going to be ineffective. You have to remember to always link it back to the exam question. The exam question is asking you about the effectiveness of the tax. So throughout my um, plan here, I've kind of explained that actually, potentially it might be effective, and these are the economic theoretical reasons as to why they might be effective. However, it might not be as effective because of these other economic considerations that we should make. Right? And that's important like for you to have that strong economic theory running through both your analysis, running through both your evaluation to make sure it's balanced, make sure you're getting that economic content, make sure you're getting the maximum marks that you possibly can. So obviously you could put a conclusion in here. I haven't written a plan for my conclusion because um, I mean necessarily I don't really feel like you have to write a plan for your conclusion. You just kind of write a nice summary, bring in a few extra additional economic kind of points or extensions um, and then also like these are just two potential points that I could have used. I do here have some kind of other points that you could have used in this so I've just gone into depth about two but you at home may have some other points you've got that are completely economic valid, economically valid and would have got you the marks as well. So um, here is what I put here so you could have easily had a point talking about what the word kind of effective means. So it might be effective in reducing consumption, or you could talk about how actually it's not gonna be effective in reducing consumption because it's inelastic, but actually it might be effective in raising government revenue. And if it raises government revenue, then um, that can be used to offset the externality through shift down of the marginal private costs because you now have the people in the market bearing some of the financial cost um, of their kind of ineffective but, um, like labour ineffectiveness or potentially because of the NHS costs, etc, etc, etc. And if you're a bit confused about that, there's a tax and externality video that you can kind of watch over that might help you. Um, another point that I put here is you can talk about irrational consumer behaviour, so the tax um, not being effective because of irrational consumer behaviour or because of information gaps, so um, consumers might not know why it's being taxed, they might not understand that it's a demerit good, um, and therefore they might still consume anyway, which would mean that the tax would be ineffective because actually there's a lot of information gaps or there's a lot of irrational consumer behavior in the market. That would have been absolutely fine as well if you'd spoken about that. 
And obviously as well, you could have spoken about how it's not effective because there are other alternative things that would be more effective. So for instance, people don't drink sugary drinks because they just really love them. They might drink them because they love them, but they also don't understand how bad they are for them. So maybe rather than taxing, information campaigns might be a more effective way of reducing the externality or um, you know, other forms of government intervention to reduce the negative externality, so advertising campaigns to reduce um, imperfect information, but also kind of like maybe subsidising um, the idea of kind of like subsidising um, healthy foods, because if you reduce the price, because remember, for the um, tax to be effective, you have to increase the price of the tax to the point where it's higher than the price of a substitute good that is better for you. But actually, if you just lower the price of um, a substitute good that is better for you, then you may find that consumers will switch more anyway. Um, and that might be better for society for a number of reasons, because you're not taxing. Uh, remember that this is a tax that um, affects the poor more than it's gonna affect those who are of a higher income. So there were loads of points that you could have used that I didn't use, um, and if you explain them to the same depth, you definitely would have got the marks. So next lesson, I'm gonna go through kind of like four, um, four, seven, I think seven example paragraphs to show you what levels they were and what marks they would have got. Uh, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next lesson. Bye.